Hi, I'm Ryan Moran. And I'm Josh Carr. And we're with Melcast 2.0. And we're here with Daniel Klaus. How Hello. You here? I notice we're shouting here. Yes. <laughs> we're used to that here. Okay. Sometimes. We don't have yeah. to do it anymore. Okay, now we can talk <laughs> normally. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned uh, Windsor McKay being, you know, a huge influence in, uh, you know, newspaper comics. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that there's any newspaper comic strips out there now that have any worth at all? Any that you read? Uh, you know, the only paper I get is the New York Times, which has no comics. So I, I so rarely see the comics, except when my... Uh, my father-in-law is always like cutting out comics and going, have you seen Pearls Before Swine today? It's really funny. But I have to say that all the comics he cuts out and gives me, I've never once laughed. That Actually, seems... the only comic I like is Jumble. I like to do the Jumble. <laughs> That's always ed edged in there. But I feel like I have not seen like 99% of modern comics. But just the, the look of them is not appealing to me. Do you feel that like the shrunken medium has sort of uh, decreased the ability to tell anything? And I feel like there's a certain there's certain styles that just became the styles of daily strips that are not styles that appeal to me. And I, I can see they're sort of commercial styles, but it's just it's it's hard for me to get past the aesthetics. I'm very superficial. Excellent. There um at one point you mentioned that you were always on the Per the hunt for the perfect comic or the ultimate comic, are you still looking for that, or is that a thing you don't do anymore? Well, no, I mean, it's not like I ever actually thought that existed, but there's, you you know, you have this sense that there are out there these great comics from the past that, um, you know, that are the kinds of things, you know, you'll, you'll think of like a, like, you know, the ultimate film noir comic or something, and you'll <laughs> imagine, you know, in 1940 there was a really cool comic that was that fits exactly what I'm imagining and then you realize no that actually there really wasn't you know there's <laughs> lots of really interesting almost that thing but not not there weren't there just were no like long form comics at all even back then but it's it's easy to to see you know what what there might have been if things had gone a different way yeah do you still collect comics at all or is that a thing you don't do you know, I'm not like you know trying to fill in my run of Man Thing or whatever, but um, you know, I will uh, every once in a while. I'll, I, I still go to the comic store, you know, every couple of weeks anyway, just to get new books and stuff. And if I see something, you know, some crazy old, you know, Life with Archie or something like that, I'll you know, okay, I'll buy it. That's cool. Is there yeah. anything recently that you've read that you've really enjoyed? Um, new stuff or old things or either or it doesn't really matter. I'm trying to think, um, I can't think of anything <laughs> real, right now. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's the stuff I've been reading is like is uh, like old stuff that I've read a million times. So I'm trying to think of something that's out of that paradigm, but I can't think of anything right now. You can dive into anything that I mean. Yeah. What's something that you continually find yourself drawn back to? Well, I just recently I've been uh, I've been reading like old science fiction comics just for the just for the crazy imagery. Oh, I know a book I really loved was uh, there's uh, there was a monograph on this guy Bob Powell that uh, I think Craig Yo did that was pretty amazing. Like every story was about like a creepy old homunculus scientist who had like a beautiful assistant who wasn't the least bit interested in his science project. <laughs> and so he'd create some hideous like sex blob creature that would <laughs> kill her and devour her. And I thought like, that's a pretty good formula. Yeah. I like I could get with that. Not a great assistant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wasn't. It was, it, it, I don't know, it was just the, the sameness of that archetype. I thought that's, here's an artist I can dig. You mentioned in um, Ink Studs the juxtaposition between, you know, rock stars and comic artists. Uh, with all of your success that you've been having, have you fallen into groupies or do you have yeah, any, right. you know, stalkerish? Has, has that rock star lifestyle yeah. seeped in? No, there's no, that's, that shows such a wishful misreading of the success of comics. <laughs> that's I mean, truly like so far from, there's just no, no way that's ever going to happen. All right. 
I, I know. If I might get a stalker now and then, but it would it would be like you know a four hundred pound guy who's you just know, really, really into got, your stuff. Yeah, or the really people who problem. rifled through your mail, like trying to get information <laughs> on you. I think the guy who uh, who edited this book, Alvin. <laughs> There's a few things in there. I thought, wait, I threw that away. Do um so, did you feel that Ghost World and Art School? Uh, confidential translated well into films from the page to the film? You know, I mean, I can't really judge that. You know, they, it, when you write a screenplay, it's what, the, what film is made from that is, is very, very different than the film that you're making in your head as you write the screenplay. Mm -hmm. And like when I'm writing a comic, I know how it's going to look and I know how everything's going to fit together and it, it usually comes out somewhat like the way I imagined it. And the films were both so, so far away from every little aspect of what I imagined. You know, it's just like the color of a character's shirt even throws everything off. And so it's, it's like after a while, it's impossible to judge. It's like a crazy hall of mirrors where you just can't even, you can't even see like what, what you intended anymore. So the Death Ray has been picked up by Electric Dynamite Productions as a film, how, how's that coming along? Has there been anything started on that, or is it? It's, we, we have a script, and so we're looking for directors. That's good. Yeah. What, um, besides Death Ray and everything else that's been produced, or anything else that you'd love to turn into a movie? Um, I mean, I'm sort of open to anything, but it, I, I'm not interested in turning anything into a bad movie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which is, you know, that's certainly the temptation. Um, how was your experience working with Cracked? I know <laughs> you did a lot of the stuff back yeah. in the day, and it was always like, I, I always thought about it as the poor man's mad. Oh, yeah. we. I mean, even when we were working for Cracked, we were making fun of it. I mean, it was, nobody working there like thought it was actually a cool magazine. We all thought it, we thought it was such an underdog and such an obviously terrible magazine that we were going to make it cool because it had no expectations on it. So we thought, like, here's our chance to just do whatever we wanted. We used to, like, we would do parodies of TV shows that hadn't been on the air in 30 years. Like, I did a parody of the TV show Ben Casey that even somebody my age wouldn't know. You know, it was like on in the early 60s, and we did this in 1985. We did a parody of Ben Casey. Like, what were we thinking, you know? And the editor was fine, you know, that's sure, whatever. Great. Yeah. Um, so, I'm sure everyone wants to know, every collector out there, is 8-Ball done? Or will there ever be any other 8-Balls? You know, I don't want to say never, but I doubt it would just be like a regular comic book. Like, it would be something else called 8-Ball. You know, it might be, it might be a comic book, but it would, there'd be something about it that made it not just like a regular issue. Because I just feel like doing it as a regular comic, it just sort of lost all its meaning after a while. Yeah. When they were coming out every two years. You know, it's, <laughs> like, it's not really a periodical anymore. Uh, how do you feel about uh, going back to your old work, revisiting your old stuff, and sort of redoing it in a way to make it fit with how you like it now? Is that a process that you enjoy doing, or is it sort of... Is it not fun? To look at the old stuff, it's, you know, it's, uh, I try to be forgiving, you know, I try to, it's uh, the stuff from like two or three years ago that I'm mostly bristling against, because that's still, I'm still that person basically, and so it's like, oh, what was I thinking? But when I look at like, you know, like stuff like the early eight balls, I just feel like that's a, that's a, like a totally different guy doing that stuff, and I have to find a way to like, be sympathetic to that guy, you know, because so I was doing I was doing my best, you know. That's all I I know for a fact. I've always done my best, so, so you can't hate. That. I can't. Yeah, I can't feel too bad about it. Okay, well, that's all the time we have. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You very much. We sure. Really appreciate it, and uh, congratulations on everything. Well, <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. See you next time.